Good afternoon. My name is Paul Genusheski. I'm the fire chief in North Haven. I've had the pleasure of being Matt Works' chief for the last eight years. I want to cover some formalities first. I want to thank those of us that had a lot to do with putting this together. The Connecticut Honor Guard, the church, Father Santiago, thank you. Thank you for being there for us the last few days. Thank you for providing blessings. Seminary and Anthony Caruso, you provided us prayers when we returned home from the firehouse. He provided words and encouragement for us and strength that meant so much to us. Being the son of Mike Caruso, a career firefighter and a dear friend of Matias, meant so much more that you were there. I want to thank those in attendance, our local, state, and federal elected officials and dignitaries. Your presence here does not go unnoticed. The North Haven Fire Department is here in totality today because of the mutual aid partners that we have in, in place. The entire town is being covered until only 100 hours tomorrow. And I'm thankful for all of our surrounding communities to be able to put that together to allow us to attend. Matt was a career member of the department for 22 years. I've had the pleasure of knowing him that entire time. He was badge number 49 and I was badge number 50. Only 18 months separated our careers. We would travel all over for funerals like this, conventions. His work ethic was something that you just can't define. He took every overtime assignment, every off-duty assignment. He wouldn't be happy if I told him he had to wear pants and not shorts but he took every assignment. If I had an assignment that I thought might go unfilled, you know who was there? Matthias Wirtz. He had a big smile. He lit up a room. If he came in for a handshake, you were guarding your hand because you knew it was gonna hurt. If he went in for a hug, you knew you were in for a real ride. Sometimes he'd just pick you right up off your feet. When I tell you that he would do anything for anyone, I couldn't even begin to come up with a number of examples. His last tour of duty says a lot. Lieutenant Cusack was his lieutenant that night in Engine 9. Lieutenant Cusack just lost his wife within the last year. He wanted to work Christmas. Matias was more concerned was Lieutenant Cusack that entire tour than himself or anybody else. He had that lieutenant's back and he always will. The entire time he wanted to make sure that Lieutenant Cusack was okay. That they were going to the cemetery to put down flowers. <coughs> Lieutenant, did you see the sunflower on his drum? Diane's with us, my friend. Last night, hundreds attended the wake. Hundreds are here now, both inside, outside, standing in the rain, here because Matt would have been here as well. I struggled with what to say today. The formalities are a bit out of the way at this point, though, so I'm gonna speak from the heart. I wanna to talk to you about what happened a little bit. The early morning hours of December 26th, his last tour of duty. Matt was assigned to an engine that was closest to the fire. You know, after you've been doing this for a while, when the dispatcher puts out that call, the tone and the voice, you just know sometimes that you're going to work. At 1.12 in the morning, Matt and all the North Haven units were dispatched to a structure fire. Matt was responding on the same engine, driving the same engine that he had come into my office and seen me a couple years earlier when he knew there were assignments coming up pretty soon, asking 
for an assignment to drive the engine down there. I couldn't do it from right away, but I made sure I did it as soon as I could. He truly was doing what he wanted to do. At 118, the engine arrived. Lieutenant reported heavy smoke coming from the attic. I was 30 seconds behind that engine because I had just returned home from Christmas dinner myself. Matt was doing everything right. Dropped the hose in the end of the driveway, driving up to the house, going to work. Three-man engine company, working to stretch a line for supply, stretch a line for attack. The lieutenant and I met around the back of the house. He was just doing his 360, trying to see what he had, and I was doing mine. We went face to face for a moment. We knew the fire was up on the third floor. It was in the attic. You could see it on the back side. The lieutenant and I discussed, let's get a line up to the third floor, try to make a good attack on this. It was a large house, four family house, three floors. The police officers on scene that arrived just before us were doing the best job they could to get inside the apartments and look for anybody who was inside because we just didn't know. It came in as unknown occupants inside in a four family house at that time of night you expect people to be home, be sleeping. The police were met with heavy fire conditions on a, on a top floor. They had to back out. They told us when, when they got back down. We still didn't know who was inside, what apartments were occupied. It's just too chaotic of a scene to really begin to get a head count at that point. Everybody was accounted for. Recall seeing Matt dropping a line, getting the hose. Matt was working hard to get that attack line up to the third floor, in and out of the doorway. The engine made a push in the fire. They called for more hose. Matt was right there. Matt wasn't just driving the engine and pumping the engine. Matt was working. He was working hard. A second alarm was transmitted within a minute and a half of being on scene. Calling in some more help. Words he knew his brothers were going to work. He knew there was work to be done. At 123, the engine nine officer called for water. Matt gave him the water he needed. He started making a knock on the fire. We had a search team at the same time on the third floor. Started the fire floor, working their way down, looking for occupants. The crew worked hard. I never doubt the North Haven firefighters and what they can do, never. The initial crew was starting around the air. The crew that had made the uh, fire attack from engine nine Two firefighters started, two firefighters, I'm sorry, and a lieutenant came out, needed air. Words was changing the air bottle, one of those members, firefighter bicycle. At 1.39, a mayday was transmitted because engine nine pump was down. That was Matt. I knew where to find him. I'm thankful that we saw him go down. As hard as that was to do, because where he was positioned, we just might not have seen him right away, the way the engine was positioned. He was on the back side of the, of the engine, and we kept working around the, the perimeter of the house. All hands were working. And as a chief, one of the hardest things I had to do was try to keep looking for occupants. Managed a few firefighters I had on scene. Now try to make sure that works every last shot that we could give him but he collapsed right next to paramedic equipment. There could not have been any faster care provided to him. From that point on, we did everything we could. The one thing I regret, we didn't have enough firefighters on scene to accompany Matt to the hospital. We'll make that right in the future, I promise. Our chaplain, one of our deputies, went to the hospital. I asked him to give me an update, let me know what they had. The Nelson ambulance team worked so hard to revive him, so hard. One of the EMTs even passed out in the ambulance. 
Everything was done from that, I promise you. Waiting for the news of what was going on. I received that dreaded phone call and I had to clear the scene myself to start making notifications to the family. Those are some of the hardest moments of my life and I'm sure they're just as hard on his wife Barbara and his mother Erica. What I didn't have the heart to tell them was that we had done so much. I just wanted to get them to the hospital as fast as I could. We got a little close at one point with an accident, but that's okay. But you know, the following day, I had to start to make sense of what happened. I haven't been sleeping too well. One night I actually couldn't sleep. I waited it to be light out and I went back to the house, look around, try to make sense of it all. It just seemed to happen so fast, I couldn't put a timeline to it. I couldn't figure out exactly how fast things happened. So I went back, listened to the radio transmissions. At 125, the engine one officer that was down in the street making a supply called the engine nine officer. So you're ready for water. Words his final words in the radio were, Roger, ready for water. But if you knew him and you listened to that, you knew he was hurting. We didn't pick up on it. You couldn't pick up on it. The people talking through air masks, you don't pick up on the tone, but when it's a nice, quiet environment, I'm listening on my, on my computer and I can hear it, you could hear his troubled voice. He was hurting, but he wasn't gonna say anything to anybody because he knew his brothers were inside, looking for occupants. He knew that failure wasn't an option and he was putting everybody else above himself, just what he has done his entire life. You know, he would have, he would not want to be called a hero, I can tell you that. But I don't know what else to call him at this point, because he made sure that the job was getting done, and at some point in time we'd get around to him. For me, that makes Matt a hero. To the family of T.S. Wartz, I thought it was important that you knew this story. I struggled with whether to convey this to you or not, but I want you to really know that he was a hero. Matt always put those before himself. He hear all the foundations and associations he was part of. Somebody said to me last night, how did he have the time? He had a time because he put others first. Matt will always be remembered as a friend, a professional, a loving husband, and a brother. We're going to learn from this. We're going to move on from it as a department. And I want to echo the words that you have a family for the rest of your life. Thank you all for attending today.